Hi everyone, my name is Panindra and in this video I am going to explain about hemoglobin and the storage and transport of oxygen. So firstly I will be explaining you the theoretical part of the hemoglobin and uh, I will also explain the structure of the hemoglobin so that I mean uh, I will also give you the tips how to remember the structure of the hemoglobin so that you can clearly represent that in your examinations. And after the explanation of this hemoglobin I will uh, go ahead with this transport and storage of oxygen. So firstly I will be explaining the introduction of the hemoglobin. So firstly the basic thing is like uh, called as a spelling that spelling is very important. So spelling is like a uh, hemoglobin uh, that can be uh, written in two formats hemoglobin like H A E M hemoglobin and H E M both are same okay uh, no worries like uh, if you are going to miss the A no problem and uh, both of the spellings are correct and it is shortly uh, so shortly it is represented as HB or HGB hemoglobin okay and the other name of hemoglobin is iron containing oxygen transport metalloprotein so why it is uh, considered as iron containing oxygen transport metalloprotein because in the structure of the hemoglobin iron will be the central metal atom and this iron will get combined with the oxygen so uh, generally uh, the structure of the hemoglobin contains uh, four iron atoms and hence the reason each of the iron atom will get combined with the oxygen atom that's the reason each hemoglobin will get combined with four oxygen molecules how it gets combined with the four oxygen molecules in the sense you are going to inhale oxygen from the external environment and that reaches to the alveoli and from the alveoli the blood will enter into sorry the oxygen will enter into the blood by the process of diffusion in that way the hemoglobin which is present in the red blood cells will get combined with the oxygen molecule so that's the reason this hemoglobin is also considered as iron containing oxygen transport metalloprotein okay so why it is considered as metalloprotein because there is a presence of iron metal atom in the center of the structure of the hemoglobin okay so this hemoglobin is also considered as red protein why it is considered as red protein because it gives bright red color to the blood that's the reason it is considered as red protein and this hemoglobin helps in the process of transporting the oxygen in the blood of vertebrates that's what I have already told you. So uh, the oxygen uh, which will get uh, mixed up with the hemoglobin, which will get bind up with the hemoglobin, will get transported uh, to the tissues and that will generate energy in the uh, human body and that process is called as metabolism. That's the reason uh, if you are going to inhale air, you will be survived. If you are not going to inhale oxygen, you will not be survived, right? And yeah, of course. Uh, this hemoglobin uh, will generate the color to the blood that is bright red color and uh, we know that as a human being especially in the vertebrates the uh, the respiration which will be involved is aerobic respiration which means you are going to inhale oxygen from the external environment and that uh, creates the process of the metabolism in your body which means generating the energy that's the reason the respiration which will be involved uh, in the human beings is called as aerobic respiration I mean especially in the vertebrates okay so in a healthy individual 12 to 20 grams of hemoglobin will be present in 100 ml of the blood okay and who invented the molecular structure of this hemoglobin in the year of 1959 max Peretz is the scientist who discovered molecular structure of hemoglobin by x-ray crystallography so by using that method i mean but by using that particular tool he discovered the structure of molecular structure of the hemoglobin in the year of 1959. So as you can see in the picture, he is Max Peretz. So now let us go ahead with the molecular structure of the hemoglobin. So as you can see here in the picture, this is the molecular structure of hemoglobin. I mean, this is the not the structure of hemoglobin. This is the structure of heme, which means hemoglobin is a molecule which contains the components of heme. Four hemes together constitutes to form a one molecule of hemoglobin that's what which was mentioned here combination of four heme groups forms a molecule of hemoglobin okay so the picture which i have which i have been showing you in this presentation is the one molecule of a heme similarly four molecules or four groups of hemes together form a single molecule of a hemoglobin so here if you see in the picture of heme 
So there are totally four pyrrole rings. These pyrrole rings plays a major and vital role to form the structure of the hem. So as you can see here, this is one of the pyrrole ring, this is second pyrrole ring, this is third pyrrole ring, and this is the fourth pyrrole ring. So in this way, totally there will be four pyrrole rings. And the molecular formula of this pyrrole ring is C4H5N. And coming to the next one, methyl groups. So totally there will be four methyl groups. So as you can see here, uh, I mean those methyl groups will be present at the first, third, fifth and eighth carbon atoms of the pyrrole rings. Okay. So as you can see here, this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth position of the carbon atoms. I mean just assume that. That's it. I mean if you are going to, uh, if you are going for the examinations and if you are going to represent this diagram in the exams, please I request you to don't mention these numbers. This is just for your reference. If you are going to mention the numbers, then we have to make sure that this is the first carbon, this is the second carbon, this is the third carbon, this will be the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, and sixteenth. So totally sixteen carbons will be present uh, because there are presence of four pyrrole rings. But I haven't mentioned the 16 uh, like kind of things because in order to make you people to understand very clearly and effectively and easily, that's the reason I have mentioned here like 1, 2, 3, 4. That is just like an out end process. That's it. Okay. So just for your understanding, I have mentioned here the numbers. But please, I request you to not to mention these numbers in the examinations. That's it. Just draw the structure. It's more than enough. And mention all these uh, all this, uh, kind of uh, components. Okay. So in the case of methyl groups, there are totally four methyl groups which are present at the first, third, fifth, and eighth. Just for your remembrance, it will be easy for you. Just uh, you need to, uh, you know, by heart this, and you just go to the exam and you can easily uh, place all these uh, components in the structure. So four methyl groups at the first, third, fifth, and eighth. So this is first. Here there is a presence of methyl group, and here there, I mean, this is the third carbon. There is a presence of methyl group. Fifth carbon, there is a presence of methyl group, and eighth carbon. Finally, there is a presence of methyl group. And coming to the third component which is called as vinyl group and this is the molecular formula and there are totally two vinyl groups which are present in one heme molecule okay and that is at the position of second and fourth positions so in the second position there is a presence of ch double bond ch2 that is vinyl group and coming to the fourth position there is the presence of vinyl group that is ch double bond ch2 coming to the next component fourth component which is ch2 ch2 single bond ch2 single bond COOH this is a molecular formula of propionic acid group. So this, there are totally two propionic acid groups which are present in the structure of the heme. They are at the position of 6th and 7th of the pyrrole ring. So as you can see here, this is the 6th position, CH2 single bond CH2, single bond COOH, which is propionic acid at the 6th position. Similarly, at the 7th position, there will be the position, I mean, there will be the uh, propionic acid here itself. Okay. So this will constitute to form a heme. And not but not the least and least but not the least okay see here there is a presence of iron atom at the center okay that will plays a major and vital role okay this iron atom will play a major and vital role because this is the atom which will produce color to the blood that is bright red color okay so that will be present at the center of this heme uh, so this is the heme group this whole which I have explained you is a single heme group and in this way there will be total of four heme groups in order to form a single molecule of hemoglobin so as you can see here this is one of the heme group and this is another heme group this is third and this is fourth so totally four heme groups together constitute to form hemoglobin structure and remember one of the iron atom can combine or can get mixed up with only one oxygen atom similarly there are totally four iron atoms which means totally four pyrrole rings sorry totally four heme groups okay so these total four heme groups will get combined with four oxygen atoms in order to form a one molecule of hemoglobin and this is called as oxyhemoglobin okay so this is one of the most important point you people have to remember so what questions can be raised from this hemoglobin part so remember these all are very very important see one iron metal combines with how many oxygen atoms one oxygen atom so as you can see here ferrum in the sense iron so one iron atom can combine with one oxygen atom that's what and one iron atom can combine with only one oxygen atom that's what mentioned here answer is one oxygen atom 
coming to the second question one hemoglobin can bind with how many oxygen atoms four oxygen atoms so because this hole is the hemoglobin and it combines with how many oxygen atoms totally four right that's what mentioned here so coming to the third question one hemoglobin contains how many iron metal atoms four iron metal atoms simple totally four iron metal atoms one hemoglobin contains how many pyrrole rings 16 pyrrole rings because one heme group contains four pyrrole rings right so this is the heme group and this is one second third and fourth so totally four pyrrole rings are present in one heme group so there are totally four heme groups which means four into four 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 is a 16 that's the reason totally there are 16 pyrrole rings coming to the fifth question one hemoglobin contains how many methyl groups totally 16 methyl groups so as you can see here in one heme group there are totally four methyl groups right as there are totally four heme groups four into four that is 16 16 methyl groups so similarly coming to the sixth question that is one hemoglobin contains how many vinyl groups eight vinyl groups and one hemoglobin contains how many propionic acid groups eight propionic acid groups so all these components are highly important to remember okay so these questions will be raised and you have to think something out of the box logically then only you are going to get these answers okay so this is what i would like to explain from the part of this hemoglobin now let us understand how the oxygen will get transported and get storage okay so you know that you know about the aerobic respiration which i have already told you previously so oxygen will be inhaled and that inhaled oxygen will undergo the process of metabolism in order to generate the energy in the body so that the human body can survive right and the transport of oxygen is fundamental of this aerobic respiration and how this oxygen will get transported in i mean will get entered into the blood by the process of diffusion which means here you have to understand the process firstly you are going to inhale the oxygen through your nostrils and that will enter into the lungs and we know that lungs contain alveoli right and those alveoli will play a major and vital role in the diffusion process which means the oxygen which will enter into the alveoli will enter into the blood further by the process of diffusion okay so in this way the oxygen will enter into the blood by the process of diffusion so transport of oxygen occurs in two forms the first is oxygen as dissolved form in plasma but here only one to three percent of oxygen will get dissolved in the plasma and will be transported uh, throughout the body okay but only one to three percent but majority of the person that is something around 97 to 99 percent of the oxygen will be transported as oxyhemoglobin so i have already told you about the oxyhemoglobin which means this is the oxyhemoglobin where the hemoglobin will be combined with the oxygen by the process of diffusion and this oxyhemoglobin will get transported throughout the body via blood and that uh, is something around 97 to 99 percent as oxyhemoglobin okay so how the oxyhemoglobin will be formed the formation of oxyhemoglobin occurs by two factors if the partial pressure of the oxygen is very high in the alveoli then there will be a formation of oxyhemoglobin or else if the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide in the blood is very high that will also lead to the formation of oxyhemoglobin so these are the two important factors which you people have to remember okay so coming to the process which will be involved so here this i have uh, i mean i have posted some of the pictures here that's it but i will be explaining you in brief so please try to concentrate here so you will go you are going to inhale the oxygen through your nostrils and that will enter into the lungs okay and we know that lungs contain alveoli and under the branch of the alveoli will be having pulmonary alveolus so finally the oxygen which you have been inhaled will enter into the pulmonary alveolus which is a component of the lungs and from that pulmonary alveolus the blood sorry the oxygen will enter into the red blood cells how as you can see here in the picture the process will be uh, clearly explained here see this is the oxygen molecule which has been entered into the red blood cell from the pulmonary alveolus so we know that the surface of the red blood cells contains hemoglobin molecules so all these are the hemoglobin molecules and all of these hemoglobin molecules will be filled with the oxygen molecules okay why 
because they will get combined with the oxygen i have already told you one hemoglobin will get combined with four oxygen molecules so one of the hemoglobin molecule will be fulfilled with four oxygen molecules okay so similarly what will be happening once it gets reached to the tissues once that blood as you know that the blood will be transported throughout the human body parts right that blood once it reaches to the tissue the oxygen will be released out from the hemoglobin in this way so as you can see here let us say these are the organs or tissues that oxygen will be released out from the hemoglobin which are present in the red blood cells okay and now that oxygen it is utilized by the uh, by the tissues by the muscles and the contraction and the relaxation process will be done uh, which undergo the process of metabol uh, you know metabolism because there will be a generation of energy because of this oxygen and finally the by product which is going to form is the carbon dioxide and now that carbon dioxide will be generated out and that will be taken up by the red blood cells itself okay and that red blood cells will be i mean uh, will move towards i mean that particular blood is called as deoxygenated blood and that will move to the heart and we know that that heart will pump the blood uh, to the lungs and that deoxygenated leg uh, that that particular deoxygenated blood will move towards the lungs i mean uh, to the alveoli okay so to that pulmonary alveoli so that alveoli is responsible to take up the carbon dioxide and that will be sent back to the alveoli and that will be sent back to the lungs and finally that lungs uh, i mean we are going to exhale that carbon dioxide from the lungs through the nostrils towards the outer external environment so in this way the process will be involved how we are going to take the oxygen and how we are going to exhale the uh, carbon dioxide okay so just it is a two seconds of process in the front end that is you are going to take the breath and you are going to exhale the carbon dioxide okay so but in the back end this is a whole process which will be involved okay so if this whole process is not involved then there is high risk of uh, survival of a human being because oxygen is very important and if you are going to uh, i mean if you are going to inhale the oxygen then only you are going to survive because that will create metabolism in your body okay so this is how the exchange of the gas occurs in the human beings and this is how the oxygen will get transported okay and how it is how the oxygen will be stored in the hemoglobin simple okay and this is how uh, the hemoglobin will be uh, storing the oxygen so each of the hemoglobin which means it contains four heme groups so that's the reason the hemoglobin will get binded with four oxygen atoms so each hemoglobin will get bind with four oxygen atoms and will get passed to the tissues via blood that's the reason the metabolism process will be taken place that's the reason there will be a survival of a human being so this leads uh, to the process of the oxygen transport via blood and uh, what is the key what, i mean which will play a key role uh, in the storage of the oxygen in the transport of oxygen hemoglobin which is one of the component in the red blood cell okay and one of the most important point which people have to remember is that 1 gram of the hemoglobin will carry 1.34 ml of oxygen which you have been inhaled okay note this point once again 1 gram of hemoglobin will carry 1.34 ml of oxygen which you have been inhaled right so this is what i would like to share my knowledge with you people regarding this hemoglobin and the oxygen transport and storage and i think you got enough information from me and if you like this explanation just like the video subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates and you can also share this video to your friends so thank you